Hello friends, today we will review an introduction to software architecture by David Garland and Mary Shaw. Mary Shaw. So they, I found the introduction very interesting. They say as the size of software system increases, the logarithm and data structure of this com computation no longer constitute the major design problems. When systems are constructed from many components, the organization of overall system, the software architecture presents a new set of design problems. These level of designs have been addressed in a number of ways, including informal diagrams and description terms module inter interconnection languages template and frameworks for the system that serve the needs of the specific domain and the formal models of component integration and mechanism so what it, it is saying is architecture architecture when, once the software reaches to certain level of complexity it is very important how we organize components software into components how this component are organized how this component component are deployed on the on the computers so it becomes a very big task which need to be documented which need to be thought about okay uh, uh, today we will just try to review all the major architectures uh, major architectures here it again says that as the size of the complexity of the software system increases the design problem goes beyond the logarithm and data structure uh, that's what physical distribution uh, design uh, f uh, this is very interesting line i'm going to read this one structure issues include cross organization and global control structure protocols for communication synchronization and data access assignment of functionality to design elements physical distribution composition of design elements scaling and performance and selection among design alternative so this is uh, very important we need to know what are the different architectures so we can find the right architecture for our problem and, and uh, that's what uh, how we organize how they are deployed that is important effective so, uh, i like this line effective software engineering requires facility in architectural software software design it, it is very important to able to recognize co common paradigms so that the high level relationships among the system can be understood and so the new system can be built as a variation of on old system i think the architecture is very very important like um, once you join some new client it's very easy to understand the code make some assumptions once you know the architecture uh, then you, you it's very easy to you 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 know okay where's the invoice where's the invoice data access component where you need to go and make the changes so you need to under understand the architecture quickly so that you can make the changes quickly so like uh, it says uh, how why our architecture is important why high level view of the system is important it goes into like uh, how the abstraction has increased in the programming language itself uh, when we started working in assembly language uh, you have to take care of so low level details as programming languages became involved there, there was a high level of abstractions now dotnet framework or the java framework uh, like they gives you so much uh, in the, that framework uh, generally now your application framework is very very less for example you have to reverse the string there, there was a time you had to write your own functions now dotnet framework gives you such a rich library of functions a lot of this is redundant our own application software is uh, framework is little less now uh, this talks about little bit more, about more software architecture why software architecture is important so now it comes the interesting part common architectural styles 
uh, it is uh, this line was very interesting to me uh, the framework we will adopt is to treat an architecture of a specific system as a collection of computational components or simply components together with a description of the interaction between these components the connectors graphically speaking this leads to the view of an abstract architecture description as a graph in which nodes represent the components and the aux represent the connectors as we'll see connectors will represent interaction as varied as procedure calls event broadcast uh, database queries and the pipes so we can think of as a graph kind of thing in which we have a nodes and the connection between the nodes is uh, that's that's the architecture what are the different big components how they what are their responsibilities and how is their interaction the first architecture it goes into is uh, pipe and pipes and filters architecture pipe and filters architecture is uh, you have filters you have pipes the input uh, input goes to one filter and a filter gives some transformation to the that input and output is created and it becomes a input to an, another uh, another filter uh, the advantages are of pipe and filter is it is very uh, reusable uh, you the filters like you if you created a filter for authentication it can be used a lot of places so yeah and it's very easy to understand this kind of flow you all you have to understand you can uh, understand the system as in small parts and that will give you the understanding of the whole architecture and the disadvantage is is, is like a very no interactive system will use the this kind of architecture because uh, it can uh, add some additional processing uh, I have seen like uh, suppose you have million records one filter has to go through million records another filter has again go through million records so they can be redundant processing which may not be good for interactive applications uh, did data way uh, object then it talks about object oriented design where object oriented analysis where objects are objects are identified and uh, they work by interacting with each other i have a lot of videos on domain driven design oops uh, do do refer to them if you want to get more knowledge event based architecture is uh, as it says when some event happens and uh, the system system response to it uh, i do have a video on event based architecture also that uh, it has become very very popular with the cloud computing the main variant of this style is on this event the component who don't who, who will be affected the by the component so the disadvantage of implicit invocation or event based architecture is that components really requires control over the computation performed by the system when a component announces an event it has no idea what other component will respond to it worse even if doesn't know how the components are interested in event it announces it cannot rely on the order which they were invoked to me that's a plus point also and they are lightly covered then this is a very very common architecture called layered architecture uh, in layer architecture you have one layer and another layer the uh, generally uh, uh, upper layer is more abstract layer over the down layer in uh, in the real world environment generally we, we we use user interface business layer data access layer in hardware they they hide the details of the hardware uh, repositories uh, is uh, another design pattern where like uh, you have a central component and you have uh, other components who uh, knowledge these are called knowledge uh, sources and uh, this is the blackboard uh, data structure so blackboard this this uh, components will be accessing with the blackboard data structure based on its state to give some services to the system 
and as it says the blackboard systems are traditionally used for application requiring complex interpretation of the signal processing such as speech and pattern recognition so the next architecture is table driven interpreters table driven interpreters uh, will make more sense to if you comes for come from c sharp or java background so table based interpreter is you have some operand uh, like uh, you uh, you have a bytecode commands and the details about the la language so in c sharp when you are working on c sharp your code is converted into the bytecode and uh, finally there's a engine which takes this bytecode and converts into the machine learning language machine language machine language uh, the benefit of this approach is uh, operating system portability you can convert your code to your byte code and then 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 you can go to all windows machine linux machine and uh, unix machine and convert your code to the binary code based um, tightly coupled to those machines so we covered today all the major architectures of uh, presented in the book uh, we'll create some other video we'll go into the case studies and see how he uh, how they give the example how the in the case studies the different architecture styles are considered what are the plus point what are the negative points thanks for watching this video my name is vikas kirni i have more than 20 years of experience in it industry do subscribe to my channel for your regular updates